Good evening and welcome to round two of Forge TV's coverage of Helm Sports Park Day. We're here for the Men's One Rugby League. I'm Seb Jones and I'm joined by Eddie Richards and Rye Barker. So we're expecting quite an exciting game this evening with the game kicking off at 6pm. Uh, Eddie, your first initial thoughts ahead of the match this evening? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's two great sides go, going to war in this amazing event. Um, obviously, it happens once a year. I'm looking forward to seeing what's, what, what's, on, what's on display on the field. I'm expecting a lot of fireworks, expecting a lot of heavy runs, heavy tackles, and let's just see how the game goes. Yeah, how about yourself, Ryan? What, yeah. what are you expecting this evening? Yeah, I'm expecting Alan to come out, out of the blocks really quickly. I think, I think they need to take the lead again like they did last year. Um, oh. Yeah, and I just I, I think I think I think I think they'll do this today. Yeah, we'll just pick on, on what you said a little bit about uh, last year. So Hallam actually were, were winning at the halftime break, and they lost pretty emphatically. Um, how much damage do you think that that will do? I'll, I'll come to you first, Ryan. How, how much damage will, will that do? Sort of losing at halftime last year. Will, what will it will the feeling be like in the camp coming back this round this yeah, year? Yeah, you know they they get, they they get, they're gonna want to stick. They're gonna stick it out. They're gonna want to go ahead quickly and just make sure that they're just sitting in. Making sure that they get they get the early lead and then we'll go from there. But yeah, I'll, I'll have to see how it goes. And Eddie, you were actually in fact in, involved in, in the Hallam squad last year. Um, how impressed were you by the university with, with their comeback at, at this stage last year? Yeah, definitely. I think they, uh, they, they, they like I said, like prior to the screen, I said like they capitalised on the Hallam mistakes very well. Um, they had a lot of strong runners and obviously there was a lot of injuries from the first half. And like I say, it's a very strong game and they obviously made the most of the injuries and just drove through, straight through the middle and out wide and they just capitalised on everything really. It was it was a very deflating loss being in the camp but I think Hallam will want to put wrongs to right and uh, get, get the win this year. Absolutely and in terms of uh, today, th this evening we've had a, a whole day's worth of variety of, of sporting event. Uh, ha Rugby League is actually what, one of the last happening uh, today. Um, the weather has been a, a little bit mixed, you know, spells of, of sunshine, but also spells of, of quite heavy rain. How much? How, how will that fare for the uh, the game this evening? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's RL weather. Uh, like I said to you earlier, um, the, the, the 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 rain, the hail, definitely makes the ground a bit more softer. So I mean, it, it'll get boggy towards the end of the game, but with the with the soft ground, it'll it'll make it easier for the game to flow. I think. Absolutely, yeah, and, and we hope for, for a, an, an absolute spectacle. Yeah. Um, Rye, uh, I know we're going to look into this a, a little bit more in yeah. detail, but um, what can we expect from uh, both sides, really, both Halman and the Union of any particular styles of play? Any, anything you can, you can tell us about both sides? Yeah, well, I think I think Hallam are going to they're going to they're going to look to hit hard. Um, you know, that's that's what Keith says. Um, but yeah, I mean, I can I can see I can see it going both ways, but you know, ha Hallam with them with the with the kicks as, especially. Perfect. So we are actually going to get a little bit of an insight to the Hallam squad. We're going to speak exclusively to the head coach of the Rugby League Hallam side, and that's Keith Santu, who's speaking with Jed Penberthy. Yeah, good evening, Keith. Thank you for joining us. Uh, first of all, it's a gorgeous evening for a bit of Rugby League, isn't it? Yeah, fantastic evening. I was a bit worried earlier with, uh, with weather taking a bit of a change, but yeah, no, it's good. Pitch is looking well. You know, it's taking the ball well. The lads have had a good warm-up, so yeah, looking forward to it. What has preparation been like in the build-up to this one? Yeah, we had a, a few big games this season, really, and we, we probably exceeded them. You know, originally at start, we were saying, look, you know, we want a good position in the league, do do relatively well in the cup, if not win, and then obviously building up to his varsity. And uh, you know, we, we won the league, went unbeaten all year. A lot of hard work went into that from the boys. Cup, we got into the final. Unfortunately, lost it by a couple of points. Um, won trying it in the end, but yeah, past three or four weeks they've been tough. You know, weather's not been fantastic on an evening, but do you know what? The guys have prepped hard. A lot of work on contact. A lot of work on that. Uh, good ball area and and stuff. So yeah, I'm well. What have you said to the boys after after that cup final disappointment? What, what have you said to them to try and pick them up for this one? Yeah, it's difficult when it's like that because actually, you know what, the lads have they've, they've all worked really hard. It's a really young squad I've had this year. For, you know, I've been here about five six years now, and this is probably the youngest squad I've had. And you know, it's just reality check. You know, you know what, we we came from not a great a couple of seasons to winning league unbeaten, and you made it into a cup final. Actually, we, we talk a lot about. You know what, what's your next chapter going to be, and what's our next chapter in in this sport for us? So, you know, yeah. Although it was tough, a lot of lads head down. They were, they were a bit, you know, a bit sad about it. But I said, look, pull your socks up. We got a varsity. Let, let's get to it. Finally, we'll just chat about the opposition and, and, and Uni of Sheffield. What are you expecting? Are you expecting quite an open game today? Yeah. Well, I think I think it's going to be a physical first five ten minutes. Varsity is always high. You know, passions run high. Lads are lads. They'll uh, they'll give each other a bit of stick. You know, Sheffield have. 
I think the thought they've, they've had us a few times in the season, but obviously didn't. But um, but yeah, I think first 15, 20 will be an arm wrestle. Then I'm hoping we'll open up in that last five, 10 minutes at first half. And then um, I'm hoping for a convincing win in that second half. Keith, thank you ever so much. It's a very, very sunny day here at the sports park. It's time to go back to the studio. Seb, that's what Keith's, Keith's thoughts are. Brilliant, thank you, Jed. Lots to sort of digest into that. And we'll start with chatting a little bit about the Hallam squad. Obviously, Eddie, you've got great insight from, from your time at, at the squad. Great to get uh, Keith's thoughts on uh, the, the team there. Who exactly are, are you looking at in terms of the Hallam rankings? Who, who's your players that, that are going to stand out this evening? Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's one player to watch for me, and it's Tom Wilkinson. Obviously, uh, three years ago, he was on the books at Hull KR. Now, now he's playing an impressive campaign for Midlands Hurricanes. I mean, he's, he's a hard runner. He knows how to di dictate the game. And if the, if the game's not going right for Hallam, he'll be he'll be the one to change it up straight away and get the boys fired up. He's got that experience of a Super League dressing room now in the Championship. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, and yourself, uh, Brian, who, who sort of is taking your fancy in, in the Hallam rankings? Yeah, so I've got number 12, Tom Bates. I think it was a pretty, it was a, it was a given, to be fair. Most tries this season, got the most man of the matches as well. Uh, you know, you, you, Hallam are going to want their big player to turn up today. It, you know, and it's, it's a case of will he step up to the occasion? You know, he's a quick, agile prop. You'll see him just on that on that hand side there. So, yeah, I'll, I'll go for Tom Bates. Tom, and, and so Tom, Tom Bates, your yeah. suggestion. And you, you had a couple of other players that you were looking at as well, Eddie. Who, 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 who were those? Yeah, for me, I feel like um, Dan Allen as well, playing at uh, number seven for Hallam. He's, he's a very good player. He, he's, you might not be able to see him. He's a bit of a small lad, but you'll definitely be able to hear him. Knows how to dictate his forwards. Definitely uh, be one of them. And also Finn Fitzgerald at number nine with the departure of Ed Barker two seasons ago. Finn came into the squad and filled that position amazingly. He's, one of the, he's a very good playmaker and he definitely knows how to tech, like, move, get the ball around the field. And, and in terms of, of your insight, I mentioned uh, a couple of times already, you were in, involved in the squad last year. Um, how was that playing in varsity? I, I know you had a little, little bit of an injury this time last year, um, but what was the sort of atmosphere around varsity playing in, in rugby league for Hallam? Yeah, it was um, obviously we were, I think we were about three o'clock kickoff, so the crowds were, were bustling. And, uh, you get you get the ball off off a kickoff and it's you've got all these voices around. It's like playing at a professional game. You're getting all these voices. You can't really hear what's going on, but when you when you make them runs, it's just like you just adrenaline goes and everything goes out the window. You just want to try and get through and get go onto the line. Absolutely, we've chatted a little bit about Hallam. It'd be only right to chat about the University of Sheffield. Uh, I know you've both got players that, that you uh, your picks out in terms of ones that I like to to start tonight. Right, I'll I'll, I'll come to you first. Um, Who's your sort of players to watch this evening? Yeah, so I've got number eight in that black and yellow shirt. I've got Seth Capex Jones. Uh, you know, the guy's got a 100% varsity record, two for two, and he's, he's going to want to make it a hat trick today. You know, and it's his last game for the club today. You know, he's got he's got he's got all he's got everything riding on this today, and he's he's going to want to make an impact. Yeah, and, and yourself, Eddie? Yeah, I've gone for a, another local lad from from my way. Uh, I've gone for Ollie Deering. Um, he's the hooker for Uni of. Um, he's going to be wanting to. Uh, Make a good impression. He's, he's playing at Hooker today for uh, Uni Officer. So he's been playing at Hull Dockers uh, in the in the NCL. Um, he's been playing there for ten years, um, and he's been he's been very quick off the ruck. So they'll be looking to get a fast player the ball so he can go to the Hallam defensive line. Hopefully, get a few tries under his belt and. Let's see what happens. Right, I'm going to pick up on, on the player you just mentioned there in terms of the 100% the record yeah. in, in Barstay, playing his last ever fixture for uh, the club. How important is it to have that ex experience within the, the squad and the rankings, you know, perhaps for, for the younger players? Yeah, yeah it's, it's vital because, you know, the first years have come into this squad and they've got quite a few today. And it's, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be about what, what, can, what can the experienced lads tell them? What, what, what are they going to be able to... This is their first time experiencing anything like this. So what what can what can those experienced lads tell them? What can they what can they get out of what can they get out of their first years? And and what what would you tell them, Eddie? What what tips would you give? I'd just say go out and enjoy it. It's a it's a special occasion. It's not the league, but it's to win win bragging rights of the city really. Um, just go out, enjoy it, have have a great time. Um, obviously, there'll be a lot of he hard hits. Take the knocks. Just go out there and like I say, just enjoy it. It's one of the one of the biggest occasions of the sporting calendar for university students. Just go out. And have a good laugh. So University of Sheffield, we just spoke about them a little bit. They got the, the advantage last year. We spoke a, a little bit about it. They were down at half time, came back, uh, produced a, a terrific second half performance. Do you think that'll spur them on with, with the momentum going into this year, Ryan? Yeah, definitely. I think it's 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 more to, it's more to do with the it's more to do with the mentality, really, isn't it? It's 
It's it's almost it's almost like if they go ahead again, they know they can. You know, if they if they if Hallam go ahead again, Uniop know that they can come back, and it's happened the last two years, and I don't see why they can't do it again. So it's it's more about a mentality block for Hallam. Can can they finally get over that stumbling block of going ahead and keeping ahead? But in, in terms of actually coming back and going behind at the break this time last year, it's it's meant isn't it, to show the character, to show the mental resilience, to come back from from quite a heavy. Uh, it, it was looking out to be quite a heavy defeat, and then they came back the second period and and, and won the game. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like when you go into the sheds at half time and you're and you're and you're down by a heavy score, like you are wanting to come out all guns blazing for this second half. I mean, if one team can do it in the first half, the other team can probably do it in the second. I mean, it's all about the mentality, isn't it? It's it's a quick game. It's gonna be it's gonna be a very quick game again today, and hopefully, let, let's see if, if there's gonna be a bit more drama like last year. And in terms of the form of both sides, I know Keith mentioned it a little bit, but Hallam have done really well this year. Yeah, yeah. They've obviously they've only lost one this season. It was in the cup final against Lancaster Lynx, narrowly uh, losing in the last minute, which was a bit gutting to see. But um, obviously, Uni of Sheffield lost the last three coming into this game. They'll wanna they'll wanna get the result that they that they want. Um, they'll wanna try and make it three on the spin. And yeah, the, the, you can just see by how they're warming up. They're up for it. They're loud. They're ready to go. Um, I think we're in for a good game of rugby today, boys. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you just Eddie just spoke yeah. about the league form in terms of the cup form. Not able to do it. Do you think this will be their revenge and to try and win tonight? It's got to be. I mean, you can't. You can't. This, this is the fourth game that these two have played, and Hallam have thrown it up technically. So, you know, you, you can't. You can't. You can't. You can't lose four 0 You know, that, that's gonna that's gonna be the main motivation. I think. You know, you can't. You can't. You can't go and lose all four games. No, absolutely not. Uh, so I think we are, as you said many times, we're in, in for a proper spectacle. The crowds are gathering. It's one of the last events of the day. How big of an impact will, will that have on the players? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, these these lads who are playing now. I mean, Ben Forshaw. It's his fifth fifth and final varsity. I mean, he'll be he'll be gutted to see the end of his uh, Hallam career. I mean, he's he's used to playing in these big occasions now. Um, but the the crowds are already starting to build up as well. So. I mean, it, it'll be an amazing, amazing spectacle. The, the, the supporters definitely will get behind the lads and make sure they're, they're all G'd up for this massive occasion. Yeah, and in terms of, of the uni, right, at Uni of Sheffield, there were a couple of other players. I, I know you mentioned you, you played, uh, that you, you were yeah. hoping to start tonight, but there were some other names that you were thought were worthy of mention. Yeah, so I've, got, I've gone for Joey Moss as well. Um, you know, I think he's a very versatile player. You know, he's played at every forward position this season. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, I think Seth's gonna have a, he's gonna have a great game, but I think I think definitely look, look out for Joe Moss. Look out for Joe Moss. Joe Moss. So, so and Eddie, just in, in terms of your insight from from the side, what can you tell us from your experience having having been in that camp this time last year? Yeah, it's 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 a very it, the ner it's a nerve wracking camp to be in. I mean, the, the lads will go out on a, uh, they'll go out for dinner. So last night I had, they were at the sponsor nursery tavern. They were there getting their pre pre match feed. Um, it's a it's a it's a it's a bit of a weird one. So you'll go into like your, your season, you'll you'll just do your own thing on a Tuesday night. But when it comes to big games like this, you, you'll all make sure you're as a team like 24 hours before the game. You're chatting, you you're speaking about tactics. The team will be announced at the table, so everyone gets that sense of community and and, and family feel. With that, then they'll just go they'll they'll go out. They won't have any any alcoholic drinks. They'll just go and sit down, have a social. It's a bit like team bonding really, but. Um, with that, then they'll go home and like they've been here since twelve o'clock this afternoon. I was speaking to them on my way down, and they've been here. They've been they've been sat over in that Red Bull tent over there. They've been undercover from the rain, yeah, 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 from yeah, the yeah. hailstone as well. Um, yeah, they've been they've been in there and just had the music pl playing, and it's just a, it's just a good feel on on this day. Yeah, sweet. And just quickly, Ryan, how important do you think that team bonding will be for for both sides, really, particularly Hallam that Eddie mentioned there? Yeah, Hall Hallam, the, you know, the team the team bonding's massive. You know, you've got to, you've got to get an understanding on and off the pitch. You know, if you if you if you can't get if you can't get along off, off the pitch, then how are you going to do it on the pitch? You know what I mean? So, I, I do I do, I do think it's massively important. You know, just getting getting involved with the, with with your lads, get getting out doing socials. You know, like Eddie said, it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be a night out or anything like that. Just get out there, and I think actually. You know, we're getting ready here, so. Yeah, yeah, I think um, you did mention there the Hallam boys. Hallam are the first out on the pitch. What do you think the, the final words from uh, coach Keith Santu, who we spoke to, what do you think their, his words will have been? His words will have been, go out there, boys, enjoy it. I want to see a bit of claret and hit to her. <laughs> nice. And the University of Sheffield as well, yeah. just making their way out. I'm sure we will get underway in just a few moments' time, but what, 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 are, you, what are you going for? Who's going to win? I don't want to be biased, but I'm going to have to say the Hallam boys, they, they, want, to, they want to make up for um, their, they want to uh, go, go for their, uh, they want to make it an unbeaten minus one this, this year. One. Hopefully so. And yourself, Ryan, who are you, uh, who's, who's your winner this evening? 
form wise, you know, I, I hope that you can look past Alan, but I, I, I think I'll keep it neutral. I'll go for Union. Union. So uh, two different of opinions there. We, let's see who comes up, who comes on top in the battle of the two. We are just moments away from kick off the two teams in a little uh, match sc uh, scrum, really. You know, what 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 would the captains be saying? Yeah, so um, Forsh will be in there. He'll be saying, oh, lads, go out to enjoy it. We want to try and get this. There'll be a few curse words in there, which we're not going to say, but um, they'll be saying, like, go out, enjoy it, have fun. It'll be the last run out for a, a handful of players on that pitch and just make sure enjoy the day. Absolutely, and I'm sure the uni of captain will be the same, the same thing as well. So it's now time to hand over to your commentary team, Jed Penberthy, but first, Joe Burton. Sports Park for the final event today. It's the Men's Rugby League between Sheffield Hallam and the University of Sheffield. I'm Joe Burton and alongside me is Jed Penberthy. And the backdrop to this one is that Hallam have already sewn up the league title in the Northern Tier 2B this season, going unbeaten before tasting defeat for the first time in the Northern Conference Cup Final last time out to Lancaster. Hallam actually defeated the University of Sheffield on the way to that cup final, who have experienced a mixed season themselves. The reigning varsity champions finished bang in mid-table after an even campaign, but come here in the knowledge that victory would mean an unprecedented fifth successive year without a varsity defeat against Hallam. It's the 17th and final event of the day in a fixture where Hallam haven't emerged victorious since 2019. The Uni of are reigning varsity champions for an unprecedented ninth year in a row, and are looking for a big result today to help that on its way to double figures as we enter the crunch period at Varsity. Excellent. Thank you, Joe. It, it seems to me that uh, Sheffield Hallam are the quite clear favourites of this one. As the guys were saying in the studio, they've got such a fantastic season behind them. And now it's a chance to take on the University of Sheffield and get that final win at Varsity. And just looking at the team news, the Hallam side shows three changes from the one that suffered a cruel late defeat at the hands of Lancaster last time out. Ollie Coles, Tom Barlow and Finn Fitzgerald all return, whilst Joe Britton and Sam Elvery take up their roles as interchanges. It looks like George Forshaw is definitely going to be the, the key part of this. Obviously, it's the fifth and final uh, varsity event. He's been there from the very start. And to, to get one over on University of Sheffield, that would be very good for him. But as we're just about to get underway, it looks like... Hallam are underway. From kicking from right to left, Art Uniov in their black and yellow. And now it's a chance for a first phase of the game down that right hand side. Maybe a chance to for the University of Sheffield to get their hands on the ball early on. A big strong challenge there in there from Forshaw, making his presence known in this rugby league varsity. Now it's over to the right hand side with Bor Borowski for University of Sheffield. He wriggles away and he'll Play it in behind him and maybe a chance now for Seymour to run forward and he's taken down on the halfway line midway through this passage of play. And there's the first kick of the afternoon. It goes all the way up to the right back spot where there is a knock on. It looks like the yeah. referee is going to go back to an already perfect start for University of Sheffield, Joe. And that, that will unsettle them, won't they, Hallam? Uh, we were saying that uh, the University of Sheffield will want to capitalise on the knock on, try and force the mistakes. Big mistake there, really, by Armstrong. A simple catch to make in that in that in that fullback role, but uh, it's an early chance for University of Sheffield to put some pressure on. And they want to be quick on the play, the balls as well, won't they? Yeah, it looks a very very positive start from Uniov. Obviously, the big underdogs going into this one final event of the day, and the sun is setting, and it really is roasting down on our faces here. Put in is in, and maybe a chance to work it out onto the right hand side now, driving in to two Hallam players still University of Sheffield just approaching the 22, about 25 metres out now. We'll be able to play it over to the right-hand side. That's Seymour. Pushed back, really good pushback there by Hallam. University not being able to gain any yardage in that phase. It's worked over to the left-hand side. And maybe a chance for Uni off to keep on pressing forward. Again, midway through the phase as Hallam retreat into their own 22 chance to work it over to the left hand side but this is really solid defense from Hallam early on Joe yeah exactly what they want to do difficult to squeeze out but Uniov are able to recycle after the end of the phase they get the penalty so they get to start their phases again works back now for Farquhar he sends it over to McKeown who's able to drive away from Good three parry. Hallam players onto the 22 now. Good early possession from University of Sheffield, would you say, Joe? 
it's not what you'd expect really, but as you say in the studio, they've lost three on the bounce this season to Hallam. There's a huge knock on there and it's the first chance for Hallam to get possession of the day and work their way up to the halfway line. If you just come in for it, when you scrum at the, in the middle of the Hallam half, but already it looks like University are, are tidy on the ball, but one mistake there has just let them down. I mean, talk about the, the University of Sheffield, they are missing Cameron Hallowell. Um, in their side, he's, he's converted 14 of his 26 conversions so far this season as a goal kicker. That is, he's going to be a huge miss for the University of Sheffield, but they've started brightly. It's exactly how they wanted. Callum are able to work it away to the left-hand side, and it looks like there was a strong challenge in there by two uni off players, but still able to work over to the left-hand side with Yaden. Really good carry, isn't away. It? It's a lovely spin there. Yeah. Maybe a chance for uni off. It's well held up at the moment from the varsity leaders. Callum in possession again, over to the right-hand side. Maybe a chance for them to break forward through Barlow. Another strong defence there by Uniov. Still Hallam in possession, midway through their phases. There's a spill there and it's out for a line-out on this right-hand side. And the first mistake there from Hallam. It does seem nervous, doesn't it, Hallam? Really, really nervous. After the defeat last time out, how are they going to respond from that? The one defeat of the season. Big question. That's the thing, isn't it? When you've gone unbeaten all season, you just want to be able to start well in varsity because it doesn't matter how well you do in the league, all eyes are on varsity at the end of it. Yeah, and as, as, you, as you say, they've met three times already this season. The University of Sheffield have lost all three. It's about revenge. Uni of get us back underway and are able to travel about five yards before three Hallam players are able to bring down Calvin. Crosscombe University of again, driving up to the 10 yard line. Phase three of this one then. Maybe a chance for Seymour to come forward, but he's only gained two yards. Means that Hallam are able to start this phase strong. Good, powerful That's run. That's a really powerful run. By Chilvers, I think that was. Picked up again by Seymour. He drives again. Maybe a chance for University to make this possession count. And there's the punt going up towards the goal line, but it's out of touch. And Hallam will get possession again, but that was better from Uniov. It's been better. All, it's been a very good start, a very bright start from them. Still no goals, or still no tries so far. <laughs> and Hallam are second top scorers in their division this season. They've scored 232. Only York have managed more. So if we expect more from them chance then for Hallam to get themselves out but they have been on the back foot in the early stage and I think that will worry uh, Keith Santu wouldn't it? They need to make a good response here to come forward. Five yards gained there by Fitzgerald. The university are able to hold on again. And here come Hallam. Support on the left hand side. There's no blow. That's a fantastic driving run. He's able to gain about 10 yards there. Brilliant, powerful work there by Bates. Another and one. Hallam come again. Another really good run. They're making a lot of yardage so far. Yeah. It's a very young side. Keith Santu was saying before the game, it's one of the youngest sides that he's had in his five years coaching the side. There's space on the right-hand side. The energy, Maybe the you? first time for Hallam to come into the 22. Good work away. This is a massive opportunity for a try. His support to the right. Still driving on. Now that's the goal line, but it's well held up by University. It's Coles in possession for Hallam. The ball spills. Might be able to work it left-hand side. But the referee has called it up. Yeah, the chance to try and work it over to Keegan Armstrong on the blind side, didn't he? Still opportunity for Hallam. They go left on this occasion. It's Yaden. Might be able to spin away. He just held up again. Really good work by University. Penalty to Hallam. Can they make the advantage count? That'll it's right underneath it, the it? goal. Decides to go to the left-hand side. There's an overload on here. And it's going to be the first try of the afternoon. And Hallam are in the lead. Exactly. Perfect work down that left-hand side by Hevitt. And exactly. the first breakthrough comes to Hallam. It's exactly the start they'd want. As you mentioned, second top scorer in the division this season. They might not have started brightly, but they've opened the scoring. Yeah, the first foray into the 22, and they're able to, to get over the try line. And that's the most important thing, isn't it? Absolutely. Excellent start for Hallam. We now lead 4-0.
Really good opportunity for them to, to build on this. And um, what, what do you think University of Sheffield will be saying after that try? They just want to regroup. They know they've started well. They know they can they can move the ball about well. But it'll be disappointing, obviously, to go behind. It's not going to be any uh, any problems with them if they were to lose varsity because they are playing against a much superior side. But really, after the start that University had, yeah, you'd hope that they would stay in the game for a little bit longer. And as well, you mentioned varsity being like a, a one-off march. They've they've not been they've, they've not been beaten in it in five years. They've won two on the bounce of players today who are playing who've who've won two from two. They want to keep that record going. Tight angle here for the conversion. We'll add an extra two points to the score. Good opportunity now for Callum to reset. And see Santu on the pitch at the moment, just trying to get his players to say, don't be complacent now. I know you've got the first try of the afternoon, but it's important not to be complacent. So with, the, with the conversion, one of the problems last year with Hallam taking the lead was the, the wind got in the way of the conversions. Obviously, it's not a huge problem this year from what we can tell. So we'll, we'll wait and see what happens. University then having to come from behind in varsity. Make sure that they have the best opportunity that they can to try and continue that fantastic varsity run. But for Hallam now, it's important for them just to just to stay calm, just to not, like I said, not get complacent. I have to say, we we know they're the better side. They they finished top of the league. They're obviously the better side, but it's again it's a one-off game. So they they'll, they'll want to make sure it's they don't have that mentality. What have you got on the uh, goal scorer ahead there? Because it's a fantastic work to, to be able to shift the ball over from the right hand side to the left hand side. There's a lot of space it's there. For them. I know it's a new squad addition this year. He's a smart rugby player, knows how to use his speed. It goes long on. There's a knock on. A oh. massive opportunity now for Uni of. <laughs> terrible, terrible take from the restart. It's nervous. It wasn't the best kick in the world, and I think maybe the bounce of the ball definitely got it was in nervous. the eyes, but. Really, it's a terrible mistake to make. As we, as we say, nerves. Yeah. Right underneath the posts then. First chance for University really to get within touching distance of the try. Expect them to work it over to the right-hand side after this. Indeed they do. Here's Borowski driving in five yards out now. Hallam are calling for reinforcements back over to that left-hand side for them. Maybe able to work it to the blind side. Good work from Uni now to try and drift back central. University with a lot of players onto this left flank, but they're still able to drive underneath the posts. Phase three since the restart then. Now, big opportunity. There's four left for... Chilvers to aim for. Five yards out. Still an opportunity. Good hands. And maybe able to work it over to the left-hand side. Big opportunity now. McKeon helps it on to Matthews, just on the left-hand side. Coming to the end of their phases, but University in a good position. There's the kick, and there's a good charge down. And Hallam are able to push Uniov to about 20 yards out. Very clean take, that. But still, Uniov come again. Can they find an equaliser in this one? Good work. By Wilkinson. Helped on again. Uniov are looking very positive in this spell, aren't they, Joe? Absolutely, yeah. Well, again, it's bar the try. Hallam haven't really managed to gain any sort of territory going forward. It has all been the Uniov. They really are making Uniov eat up their phases, though. That's a good, powerful run there by... O'Keefe. They've gained a lot of ground sideways, haven't really moved forward in a while, have they? If there's the kick underneath the post, and it's a spill again. Maybe an opportunity for Uniov, but it runs straight out of play. But better again from Uniov. They're getting into those zones, but they're not being able to break through at the moment. Yeah, um, listen, they'll, they'll be happy. Um, I know they're, they're four down, but have started brightly. Looking further on. After the season that Hallam have had, where do you think that these early match nerves would sit with Keith Santu? Sorry? Where do you think these early match uh, early match nerves would sit with Keith Santu? The kick doesn't go very far. And maybe a chance for Uniov to start again inside the Hallam 22. Space on the left-hand side. Not the best pass in the world, but still forced over to the left-hand side now with 
Childers. Good work there. So Keith, dragged down by two Hallam players. Still no yards made up from Uni of in this phase. Hallam retreat. Right hand side. Borowski. Space on the right if they want to use it. This is Bullock. Dragged down. And Hallam have defended really well. Push them back to the 20 yard. But still Uni of in possession. There's the kick from Borowski. Doesn't come to any fruition there for University, but Hallam regained possession. They're able to start again. That was Ross Seymour just lim limped off injured. Joe Riley's replaced him for the Uni of, Uni of Sheffield. That's a big blow for you. It is, yeah. Hallam working out. There's the good hand off there. They get up to the 10 yard line. Just powerful run. Get themselves out of the 22. And up Ross, to the halfway line. It's been Ross Seymour's second varsity as well. Won't, won't be happy to have missed out so early on. Hallam in possession. Support left. It's a good turn in there by Barlow. Gets up to the 10 yard line, able to stand and play it back. And still, Hallam come bursting through. Good, That's a good powerful again. handoff. Good Terrific again. handoff by Wilkinson. Callum, they got two over. There's the kick into the corner. It's too heavy. That's going to run out of play. It was ambitious. It was always ambitious. But it's the ambition they've shown all season. And really, with Hallam, you want, you want to take a couple of yards off that kick as well, don't you? I know yeah. You want to poke it through the gap, but what it does allow university to do is to, is to just calm down and be able to start again. Absolutely, yeah. They stopped start so far. See the nature of the beast, really. Tap and go. And University get out of their own 22. This is Makio. Works it left to Farquhar. Five yards away from 10 yard line now. Works over to the right hand side. Good hand Good in the end by yeah. Borowski. Looks like it lost it, didn't it? And it was a heavy pass to him. Mm. University start again. It's Seymour bursting through. Really strong introduction to the game. Right up to the halfway line. As the wind starts to pick up quite a bit more, you'd think that would suit Hallam. There's the punt towards the fullback. Oh, it's bouncing again, and that's been a problem so far for Hallam. Picked up eventually by Armstrong. Wasn't it's been forced back by three Uniov players. That's terrific defence from the front by Uniov. Wasn't worth taking the risk, try and collect it first time, then it, you, you run the risk of a knock on, don't you? It's happened a couple of times so far, hasn't it? Yeah. They've, they've, uh, they've learned from the mistakes early on. Keith Sandy will be happy with that. Hallam in possession. What have you made of the opening spells of the game so far, Joe? It's been pretty even. I know uh, the University of Sheffield started the bright there. Hallam have come into it last five or ten minutes. They'll, they'll be delighted. They've got the lead. That's good work from uh, Fitzgerald there to stay on his feet. Gain an extra yard. Working it over to the left-hand side. Good work. And now the space as they come over the halfway line. And they've still got men over. Really good work by Hallam. Can he get release it before he hits the deck? No, he can't. They'll have to eat up a face. And be able to go back on the inside. Lovely feet there by Forshaw. Getting into yeah, the so uni of 22. And stealing a couple of yards. Mistakes. Purple shirts streaming on the right-hand side. There's the kick into space. Clever. And Hallam pick it up. Oh. They kick it out back into touch, but that it, was clever It was again. clever. Good ingenuity. Yeah, again, they'll be happy with that. 100%. Really, Joe, it's the game hasn't reached a, a lull at uh, stages, but, but University, when they get forward, they don't seem to have the same cutting instinct as Hallam. No. Well, I keep talking about Hallam being the second top scorers in the league this season. University of Sheffield did manage a 62-4 win back in November, so we know what they are capable of. That's their biggest win of the season. Had 10 individual try scorers that day, so they can't spread them around. That's good work from Uni off to work their way out of defence. I'd say 10 different try scorers across a, across a match is no mean feat. Not at all. Powerful from Hallam to restrict Uni off just to a couple of yards. University come again. There's space on the left hand side. One more pass. Forward. It's blocked off. Was that a deliberate knock on there? It looked like it. Stuck as I say, his right hand out. Yeah, very 
It was nifty from Yeedon. Of course, deliberate knock-ons are now being a little bit more harshly judged in the upper leagues, in the Super League, but on this occasion, the referee thinks that Yeedon's done okay, so it will just be a... Just let, you. just let the game run as long as it goes both ways, and I don't think either side can have any major complaints. Yeah, and the one thing you don't want in varsity is an early card. Yeah, you don't want any controversy either. Don't don't, don't want to be talking about referees spoiling the day at all. We just talked a little bit early, though. There was definitely movement with the hand there to, to try and knock it on. There was no deliberate attempt to catch the ball. Yeah, um, look, the, refer the referee's giving it that way. So Uniov with the put-in, just on their own 10-yard line. Able to work the ball to the right hand side where two are over. That's a good That's powerful really good run ground. there by Have a look at that. He's been quality in this opening half so far. And still Uniov in possession. Work it over to the right hand side with Matthews. He gains an extra couple of yards. Superb powerful captain's quality from Borowski, wasn't it? Moss gets up to the 22. Cheers from the university subs just below us. They can feel a bit of momentum growing. Way inside the Hallam 22 now, coming to the end of their phases. So it's worked over to the left hand side. They've got three over. Big oh, opportunity for Uniov, but the knock on. For the knock on a, it's so unfortunate. It is so go. unfortunate, yeah. It was brilliant, patient build up until that point. But unfortunately, the knock on has put an end to it. If you're McKeon, you're, you must be. Oh, you yeah, must it's be a big chance. That. It's a big chance. He'll, he'll feel responsible for it, but yeah, he's got to recover from that now. Yeah, they had the overload on that left hand side, but. It is still early in this game. Callum still lead. Just the one try in it. There have been fairly, fairly low scores when the two sides met back in November. Hallam won 14 10. It's a fairly low scoring game, so maybe part of the course for these two teams. Just speaking to Keith Sitting. Just speaking to. Keith Seafood before the game. Well, there's a penalty here. Was that a forward pass? Was there a knock on there? Big oh, opportunity inside the Hallam 22. We've got to make these count as I keep talking again about Cameron Hallowell being missing. Subs running on. Are they going to choose to kick here or are they just going to choose to run? It looks like they're going to choose to run. I'm sure that they're that working constant? forward. They do break their way into the Hallam 22, but forced back again by the Clarets. Uni of building. They're through to the deck. Maybe a chance of a turnover here from Hallam, but University able to maintain possession. Work it over to the right hand side, but every time they've got into the 22, they've mishandled the reason why Hallam still lead this varsity match. Thank you for joining us on Forge TV and there's the pass and that just seems to be the, the story of university's first half, doesn't it? It's been scrappy, it's been bitty. Um, again, the nerves playing a part, mistakes have been made that maybe they wouldn't have made if it's been more relaxed sessions and training or, yeah. But like we were, say, we were saying earlier, it, this, is, this is the cup final, isn't it really? Yeah. But this is, the, this is the pinnacle of university sport. It doesn't matter how much you prepare for a game like this. Yeah, I mean, Hallam have played that cup final two weeks two weeks ago and they've gone unbeaten, but this is the one they'll care about. If they lose this, all the hard work this season will be sort of overshadowed, really. That's the same for both sides. But they need to get out of their own 22 now. There's a bit of a scramble on the ball. It's Hallam, work it over to the left-hand side and work it centrally. That's a good, powerful handoff again. You can see why Hallam are, were unbeaten this season just by the ship power of breaking out of their own defence. Big. Onto the left hand side, but midway inside the Hallam half. Onto phase three now. Hallam just happy to knock things on, but it will be a penalty to Hallam for offside. University player stepping out of the line too early. Meaning that Hallam can gain a few more yards. We do talk about the experience or the, the, the youthfulness of Hallam Scrub. There's so much experience in there as well. Tom Barlow, Ben Foot, Forshaw's in Hawk, all possibly playing their last games today. It's a lot of experience in that 13. We're in the 18. Dalton Tones with Joe Burton to our left here on Forge TV. Thank you for joining us as Hallam 
break into the university half. That's a powerful run by Fitzgerald. As he takes up about 10 yards in that phase, driving over to the 22. Really powerful again by Allen. Now it's a dangerous position here for Allen. Again, a lot of ground, a lot of ground. They've still got phases in the tank. Got the overload They've got the two men side. over. But that's a powerful run. Oh, he brilliant. won't need the extra phase. It's brilliant. Hallam have their second try of the afternoon. Fantastic. It's direct. Exactly what he wanted it to be. It's brilliant. And it was just it was just a case of being able to make up that yardage midway through yeah. your section. And it's the, the two on the short side who are sort of bringing away the opposition players and creating space for the try. Fantastic. It's a long way back for University of, do you think? It is. Um, but having said that, this time last year, Varsity Hallam took a 12 0 lead early on and lost with that. So, lost quite emphatically with that. So, the Uni of will be hanging on to that. Hope they can repeat something similar. That's something that they're going to really have to dig deep now. Yeah. A really good opportunity now for. This is where you see where your qualities lie. Hallam to extend the lead, 8 0 as it is at the moment. Just to make it 10. But like you say, if. University can make up a 12-point deficit last year. It's something that Hallam will do things ticking for them. Kick is good. The kick is really good. I've got to worry about the wind, but there's certainly there's no problems with that whatsoever from Tom Wilkinson. It's a really good kick. What's Wilkinson's stats been over like for the season for his kicking? He's taken a he's taken a good run up there. Yeah. It is a windy day. I was down at Pitchard earlier for the Rugby Union and it, it was coming across and it yeah. was making you cry. But Wilkinson's done really well there just to judge the wind. It's Wilkinson's experience. Talk about having experience in the championship with Hull KR. Um, yeah, he's a, a very a top quality player. They'll know that. It's, it's a sign of that. It's a long way back for University of. But Hallam are in complete control of this one. Every time University have got into the 22, they haven't been able to make those account. And the two times that Hallam have got into Uni Oz. That's the quality. That's, that's the, the, quali the quality that it shows. Yeah. That's why Hallam have won their league. It's the University of Sheffield. Which finished pretty much banging mid table. Not really going anywhere. So Uni Oz need to dig deep and Fleet will get us back underway. But towards the full back area where that's caused a bit of problems for Hallam so far, but it's gone all the way out of play. But was there a touch there? That's what they were they were worried Wilkinson. about. They were worried about that. Again, the ball with, with the wind, the ball taking flight. Got to be careful. There was a touch there. It means it's a uni of restart. And it will go to Hallam. It's all the way out of play. But what it does allow uni of to do is really step up and be able to make as much yardage as possible. Yeah. Kick goes long and it's sliced over to the left-hand side, but not as far as the 22. And now it's maybe a chance for Matthews to break into the Hallam end zone. Good work again. Worked over to the right-hand side with O'Keefe. Phase two of this one. Some call for obstruction as Uniov tried to work it over the to the right-hand side and there's the knock-on, but did he get a foot on before it went down? The referee doesn't think so. And it will be a Hallam put-in. And it gives Hallam time to regroup. But that's just kind of summed up the sloppiness of Uniov in this first yeah. half, hasn't it? And we keep banging the drum, but it's the nerves. It's the nerves of, of not wanting to lose four on the bounce. As the, the guys mentioned in the studio, that, that would be unprecedented, losing four in a season at Hallam. You are a Hallam guy. I'm I am indeed. I'm a uni guy. What, what does this rivalry mean to you? I mean, it's massive, yeah. The universities aren't, aren't best of friends with each other. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's brilliant. It's exactly what you'd expect it to be, exactly what you want. A friendly rivalry, healthy rivalry. It's a little bit of a... Fizier are talking to from Keith Seaton, who's come onto the pitch to centre Wilkinson, but Wilkinson moves into the second row now. That goes Moth, sorry. Maybe a chance for Uniov to break forward. Catch it to Hallam put it. They work it over to the left hand side. Stepping so out under 22. Look at That's this. brilliant it's running. Brilliant. And now he's got space in front of him over the halfway line. Maybe a chance to power on. There's one more handoff. Has he got the energy to get all the way? Yes, he can. What a wonderful, wonderful try. Well, how about that? <laughs> Scored the most tries this season for Hallam. That might be the best of the lot. Fantastic, Tom Bates. 
And that's the reason why, isn't it? Picking the ball up and just driving and driving. So much power to work his way through the Uniov half and the power to ensure that he stays up and gets to the tie line. Yeah, I don't know how much um, how many plays he shrugged off there. Four, five. Fabulous. Terrific try. And this could end up being quite a long afternoon for Uniov. That's what it's starting to look like. Um, it's not damage limitation yet. Not for a long time, but... That would be the message that they're sending out at the moment, I think, to try and get back into it. Just brilliant from Tom Bates, wasn't it? It's one of the most agile props you'll see at this level. Rain is just starting to come down at the sports park as well. That might just add a little bit of factor to it. It's been slippery hands from Uniov, and a little bit more wetness is not going to help. Yeah, we were thinking before the game that this, this would suit Hallam. Um, more, more mistakes, isn't it? It opens the door for that from the University of. Hallam was saying before the game is that they don't mind wind, they don't mind sun. Yeah. But when the rain comes in, they don't, they're not the most positive. And there's Problem the wind. There. Yeah, there we go. We said it was a problem factor. last year. It was a problem last year with the wind. And it is absolutely hailing down now, isn't it? It's, it's sideways rain at the moment. The wind is yeah. so clearly why Wilkinson missed that. But Blowing in the direction of the University of Sheffield. A Where rallying cry from the subs for Sheffield. They want to start from nil-nil, start from scratch. The old adage goes. <laughs> 14 nil the deficit now, but really, Uniov, they've had the quality to be able to break into the 22. Yeah. And that's, that's I think, what will annoy them the most. Yeah, it's that, that final that final ball as such. It's been floppy, there have been mistakes. Kind of nerves setting in. But this is a good opportunity now, now that the wind is coming down, now that the rain is coming down. It's a big opportunity now. Can they pin Force Hallam the in? Goes to the corner. It is going to bounce, and that's a lovely yeah. touch there to bring it up and up to the 22. And that's Brilliant really composure good. under a lot of pressure. Eden, that was. Comes over to the 22. Now driving forward, midway through his own half, and it's going to take four <laughs> uni off players to bring him down, and that's the power, that's the precision. There's still a little bit of afters whilst he's trying to get back up, but Fitzgerald will pick the ball up and they'll come again, driving over towards the halfway line. Really good work there by, by Wiltshire. A couple of yards into the halfway line. Hallam have done well to get here in three phases. Ten yards into the uni off half, and they're making up ten yards after every phase, aren't That's they? That's what they do. They come at you. Much better from uni off. Holding him back, spurred on by the supporters below us. Another strong handoff, but a penalty to Hallam. Inside the uni of half, and maybe able to Bates. drive forward again. There's a huge slap as it goes to ground. Agile again, Tom Bates. Looks like the referee is just going to hold it up for the no advantage. Hallam are going to have to retreat 10 yards. That's the end of phase, and Uniov can start again. Really, as we tick towards half time, it's it has been one-way traffic, hasn't it? Yeah, again, the University of Sheffield, they'd, they'd have been happy with the way they started, but when you, you make the mistakes that they've made, if you're asking for one thing, really. There's not really a lot you can do with the third try when, no. when someone runs straight through you like it's that. It's agile as that was brilliant. The space opened up far too easily. Yeah. But the new about him, Tom Bates, there's a lot of talk about how agile he is, how quick he is. Showed all of that in abundance. A nice reverse pass there as University tried to get up to the 10 yard line. Well dragged down. Well, I'm just retreating. They'll be happy to go into half time with a clean sheet, but there's the punt and it's going to bounce Have and there's a careful. bit of hesitation yep. Yep. and it might allow University in. And the touch is just a little bit poor and it goes out of play, but that was. Big Real big hesitancy there from the Hallam defence. Yeah, defense. trying to force the error. Again, the wind's died down a little bit, but still the, the conditions aren't perfect. From a Hallam perspective, you want one of your you want one of your backs to take control there as it's coming to you. It was a very difficult bounce as it always is. Allows it to bounce and it what made it even easier for Uniov as it was bouncing back towards them. If the touch had been a little bit better. I don't, he, might have been in. I don't know if he expected the, the, the ball to bounce from that, invi that invitingly, though. 
University. From this position last time, they managed to get it all the way up to the tie line. And here goes Bates again, driving along. He's gone through six uni, uni players before hitting the deck. That's a fantastic first phase from Hallam. Being able to work their way out of the 22. Falls on the right-hand side. Dragged down again. Better. Bit more fight in the University team, I've seen. Yeah. That's what, that's what we want to see. Hallam outside their own half now. There's all the sport to the left-hand side. Can they work forward? This is phase number four or five. We haven't got the counter in front of us. So Hallam are able to work their way towards the 10-yard line, but I don't think they made any yards in that phase. No, it's put it sat quite sideways. It's good from the University of Sheffield, pinning them back. There's the punt in towards the corner. With two to chase, McKeon will pick it up and no good hands there. Phase. He's able to drag away from one Hallam player before ending the first phase. The university, is it a case of just trying to make it a half time as it is? It might be the case. Um, they've settled down a little bit, haven't they, since that, uh, that Bates try. Um, so, yeah, that, that might be the instruction. But sometimes, and we probably saw it last year when they were 12 mil down. All of that pressure seems to go, doesn't it? Because now yeah. there's no there's no uh, onus on you to try and make the inroads. Yeah, for two very different sides, obviously, since then. But, uh, yeah, the, the pressure's off, in a sense. But the referee is giving the university a couple of extra yards for that one. A couple more rolling subs today. And before the game, both uh, both coaches agreed to rolling subs. Yeah. Just got on, a hot, on a hot day like this. I know it's been raining, but on a hot day like this, it's yeah. quite nice. It is tiring, especially with the, the, the energy that this fixture is played in at varsity. Can take a lot out of you. University up to the halfway line. Good work there by uh, by Borowski. As always, he's probably been my player of the half at university in this first half. And he's wow. in possession again. Good work over to the left-hand side. Really powerful run this by Matthews. And Jack Borowski is just such a, a, a versatile player. Plays almost anywhere, really. Callum worked the turnover, though. They're able to work their way out. That'll be, again, frustrating for University because they've made up a lot of yards, but they haven't really been able to make it count. Working over to the left-hand side now, powered by Bates, taken out by four University players, ticking towards the half-time whistle, up to the 10-yard line, and it's a brilliant step to the side, jinking away from a couple of Uni players. That was four short making his fifth and final varsity appearance. That's a blind pass, but University can't get out of it. And it Careful. falls to Armstrong, whose handling hasn't been the best for Hallam in this first half, but he's able to gain a yard as he picks the ball up. Joe Riley's now limped off. He came on about half an hour ago. Hallam up to the 22. Support onto the right-hand side. Maybe able to work this count. Maybe... Is this the last chance of the first half? Good, powerful challenge there by the University defence. But coming to the end of their phases, Hallam about 10 yards out, dragged to the feet. Two Hallam players are desperately trying to bring him down. Really good work here by, I think that's Bates. Phase ends. And still Hallam. Central now. There's two over to the left-hand side. Big oh, opportunity to make so it count, but the pass is just slightly behind him. Yeah. They're still able to drive forward. The ball didn't go forward, so it won't be a knock-on. So there's still an opportunity for Hallam from this one. They've got to kick soon. And there it is, over to the right-hand side. Uniov, don't take oh. charge. It's a huge mistake. Oh, and there's so a knock-on just before the try. It's unfortunate. I think he slipped really, doesn't he? Yeah, Couldn't I don't think he's expecting it to come through. I don't think any, any of us were. It seemed bread and butter to the University of Sheffield, but the chance has been and gone. Yeah, thinking about thinking back to last year, was that the game? Has he just spilled the game? He could have done. If, uni if University the come out in the first, in the second half, as they come out in the first, but make those chances pay. There's a big comeback needed though for that to happen, but we'll, nev we'll never know. We will. In about an hour's time. <laughs> the university onto their second phase of this spell. Driven back, really good defense by Hallam. Negative yardage 
from this attack for university. Now over to the left-hand side. Still centrals. We're ticking down to half-time on the final event of what's been a wonderful sports park day in varsity. The last of 17. It is always a brilliant day, isn't it? Seeing all the people come out, supporting both sides. What other events have you been watching today? Bit of the rugby union. Saw on Forge TV earlier. Um, bit of the football. Good hands this time by Armstrong. Hasn't been his strength this half. It's University winning the union earlier. Down to 14 players. Always a keynote event in the varsity, but with the ice hockey as well. And there's a spill. Yeah. Maybe a last chance for University in this half to get forward. They'll need to make this count. It's a very different game if they go in half time. Where do you think the university need to improve in the second half? It just, it's just the mistakes. It's sloppy. It's been careless at times. They need to get in a half time. Just tell them to relax. Yeah, they def definitely need to relax. A few minutes to go until the break. University with a chance to break into the Hallam half. And if they score now, that's really going to put the cat amongst the pigeons. It, it'll get their tails up, won't it? Massively. And they'll believe after what happened last year, if they'll be on for a repeat, it's a Phase big, one. big ask. Get about five yards. It's good defense again from Hallam to just pin them down. Go over to the tight side. Maybe a chance for Hallam to just hold back and let University try and build an attack. This is phase three now. Looking to burst and get as close to the 22 as possible in this phase. Good work from Ms. Chilvers. Four over on the left-hand side, but not used on this occasion. Eats up another phase. Now, there's a lot of space on the left-hand side. Big opportunity for University if they move it quickly. Goes down Chilvers this time. Getting to the end of the phases. There's the kick underneath the crossbar from Borowski. It's really good work there by Fleet to try and work out. Gain a couple of yards. And that is half time in the rugby league. Sheffield Hallam have pretty much dominated it from the first whistle and, and actually probably going deservedly. Yeah, 100%. They'll be delighted with how they've, they've coped with everything, coped with the conditions. Yeah, they'll be delighted. So Hallam go in to the break with a fantastic lead at the moment. Back to you guys in the studio. As we are, just carrying on before here, it's, it's the second half that university could really could really power, power on, can't they? Yeah, 100%. University definitely need to find a, an, another gear going forward, don't they? Again, we, as, we, as we keep saying, they just need to relax. They've been nervous, really nervous that first half. Half time. Hello and welcome back. So that was the first period. We've had three tries and one conversion. Um, edit your overall thoughts all together. Yeah, it was a very good first half. I mean, you, you, we, I've made a lot of notes about that first half. I mean, what, what were we saying before the game? Tom Bates, he's hard, a hard runner, strong runner, fast runner. Um, even one, a dark horse as well, Joe Britton. I mean, he was running hard. Them two props running the show. I mean, like, like we said, both sides con controlling the uh, line speed very well. Um, yeah. Yeah, and 40 nil to, to Hallam Rye, your, your thoughts? Yeah, no, I think Hallam, especially when Bates scored that second try, I think the head sort of went down a little bit. You saw you, you saw Union of Boys get on after the first, the first sort of 15, 20 minutes, and then they sort of, they sort of got a little bit deflated in that second spell. I'm not quite sure what they're going to do about that, but we'll see. Yeah, one thing, interesting thing about the University of Sheffield is, is their coach was actually on the balcony yeah. in, in our position. What, what do you make to that? Well, you know, because we're, we're, we're just standing out there, and they, the University of Sheffield coach was just standing to the left of us. Um, shouting, shouting down at the head coach, and I, I, th I think I think it's definitely it's definitely a good thing. It's definitely a good tactic because he, he's giving bird side, he's giving bird side analysis towards that bench. You know, making sure, telling people to get warm, telling people to do this, telling people to do that. And he's got he's got a better view of the pitch because when you're when you're higher up, you see more of the pitch. You've got more of an angle, and it's, sometimes you can see stuff from up here that you can't see down there. But that, that's the thing. It's, it's a good thing. 
How do you feel, Eddie? Being being backed at orders from from above above. How do you feel? Yeah, I mean they do it in they do it in the Super League. Um, they do it in the in the, the in the professional game. Um, it's it's a better thing for the coach to do. Um, as you'll be able to, as you'll be able to like like what Ryan said. He's he's seeing the pitch from an aerial view, so he's seeing what's happening. It's easier to get your your, your thoughts across to the players out wide or in the middle of the park because they not, might not be able to hear you from the touchline. So with that, they, obviously the orders can get passed along the line quite well. Yeah, so so, so that that was one of, of, of quite a few of uh, noticeable mentions, really. Uh, we've spoken about Tom Bates, uh, the Hallam player, having, having a great half so far, isn't he? Yeah, unbelievable. Like I said, just running hard, running fast. Obviously, he made, made the break in, late on in the first half. Obviously, I think there's a bit of a argy-bargy down in the in goal area, but um, thoroughly deserved for the lad. I'm, I'm made up for him. Um, let's hope he can pr- reproduce it in the second half. And uh, Ryan, who would your sort of be uh, your, your player of, of the first half be? Well, I, 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 I had to pick someone different. I picked Sam Avery. I think for that first half, he was really, really good. Really, really strong runner, and he got a little bit outside. And that, and that, sort of, that sort of set the tone for the, for the, for the first half, I think. Yeah, because University of Sheffield are, are down, but, but are they out? Uh, what do you think, Eddie? Definitely not. I mean, um, if, I was, if I was the head coach, I'd be in the sheds at our time and saying, lads, like, look, we need, to stre- we need to strengthen up our, our play the ball. Um, Need to strengthen for me, like we said on on the on the balcony there. We need to strengthen, like I'd say, look, we need to strengthen this right hand side. Um, but they're definitely not out of this game. Definitely not. I mean, it's what uh, they could have three tries converted for if Uniov can do that, then they're, they're right back in this game. Yeah, you you spoke there a little bit about Uni's right hand side. Um, is that is that Uni's uh, demise on their right, or, or should we praise Hallam for their work on their left? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, not to not to disgruntle the. Um, the, the right hand side, um, their, their their right hand side is a is, is looking strong, but Hallam's left hand side though they are very they're looking very strong this after this evening. Um, you can't really fault it that, and Hallam have seen that now and they're wanting to exploit it. They've obviously scored one down that side, and then when they've realised oh, there's nothing going there, they've come straight across to the right hand side and there we go. Yeah, just to let everyone at home know is uh, the cheerleaders are coming out now. Uh, for their performance, so we will be uh, giving you coverage of that in, in a little while. Actually, I've just been told they're not anymore. So uh, we, it'll just be us continuing our little chatter. Um, Ryan, what do you think to to the, the wing play of, of both teams? Um, wh- how do you think they're faring? Yeah, no, I think you and the just, you know, they, when they have got that ball, when they have got it into that into that final third, they, it's been from Hallam's mistakes, and that's what Eddie touched on earlier, is when you and the will get into the good positions is when Hallam will make the mistakes, and I think that, that has happened. Yes, absolutely. So, so we've uh, plenty to discuss, um, and plenty that, that happened in that first period. Really, in the second forty, what are you expecting, Eddie? Yeah, I'm expecting uh, both sides to come out strong again. As you can see, the for, the for the last five minutes of that first half, the legs were starting to go a bit. A lot of interchanges were made, but uh, I can see Uni of Sheffield wanting to try and get get their noses in front in this second half and uh, try and push on and get a result. Um, like I say, both sides have been wanting to get that victory. Hallam will want, it, will want it to be making it 4-0 for the season. Uh, let's see what happens, eh? So, so um, one thing to note, right, in, in that first 40 minutes, there were quite a few injuries to the University of Sheffield players. How, much, how will that impact the squad? Well, it just, it just sort of changes the system, you know, when you're... When you're out there and you know you you, you play the player next to you comes off and a new one comes on, you know you, you're trying to you're trying to transfer messages. You know they might not be quite warmed up into the intent. It's been a really intense game so far, really intense first half. And sometimes that first that first hit that you get when just coming off just coming off that just coming off that bench is it's going to be hard to take. But you know I think it just it just slightly unsettles Uni of, and that might that might be a reason why they're why they're currently trailing at the moment. Absolutely, they are currently trailing, but it's all to play for in the second forty. And with that, we'll hand over to the commentary team. Jed Penberthy, but first, Joe Burton. Cheers, guys. Thank you very much. What a fantastic first half that was for Hallam. Really well done, like, to, to, to get themselves in the lead, but also to restrict Uni of to yeah. getting into the final 22. Yeah, they, look, they enforced mistakes from Uni of um, and everything that, that they needed to do. Um, so, yeah, they'll, they'll be delighted, hoping for all the same in the second half, but... They don't need to be as aggressive. They don't need to be as direct as they were because they've, they've got such a commanding lead. What do you think Uniov would have said at half time? Just to calm down, just to kind of just to, to gather your thoughts. Just they, they know that they're better than this. They're making mistakes that they shouldn't be making that they wouldn't have otherwise made. Um, just try and cut that out where possible. I know it's quite a superfluous thing, seeming that it's a game of two halves, but but really with the sun now 
into the university as we saw that in the first half it really had a problem with the Hallam fullbacks yeah the conditions had a played a part in the first half all around really with the wind and the rain we saw the the missed conversion towards the end of the first half um from Wilkinson but yeah we'll see what happens so Hallam in possession now for the start of the second half getting up to the 10 yard line may be able to wriggle free with Keith over to the halfway line and maybe a chance for Hallam to wriggle on. There's a couple of changes at halftime as well. We'll bring them to you as soon as we can work out what they are. So Hallam have broken into the uni off half for the first time in this second period. They've got four over to the left-hand side. Good driving run. Gets about 10 yards out. 10 yards into the uni off half and able to recycle it again. This is about phase four. Maybe able to work it into Bates, who drives into the 22. Held up on this occasion. The ball stays up, so not end of phase. And there's three over on the right-hand side. Another chance Steve. for Hallam to score again. There's a little trip, but the ball is over the line now. Hallam has scored. Bit of afters. Bit of afters. Got to be careful here. There's a little bit of frustration on the right-hand side. I think the frustration would be for Uniov to, to allow Hallam to get in that easily. Yeah, again, you talk about the mistakes. He won't be happy with this. Um, in the build-up, we mentioned Vin Hock as well. He's come on as an interchange in the second period, playing his last game for Hallam, possibly. Um, so looking forward to see what he can produce in the second half. The fast hands are in there, really, weren't they? And, and, the, and the crucial moment of that try was the fact that uh, Fitzgerald was able to keep the ball alive rather than go to the next phase. Yeah, it had so much space over on that far side. It just allowed Hallam to extend their lead now, powering through. And it looks like there's only going to be one winner of this year's varsity for the... Men's Rugby League. Whether they can keep a clean sheet, that's what they'll want. That'll be the next goal, won't it? Yeah. How important will that be to the side? <laughs> for, the, for the bragging rights, it'll be fantastic. Yeah, they'll, they'll be delighted with that. University of Sheffield will be desperate to avoid that, though. Absolutely desperate. Um, they've, they've lost three times already this season, but to do that in, in varsity, it's just humiliating. That's what the uni of really needs to do to try, try and find, try to break their way down. They need to sort their hands out for once. Yeah. Chance of Wilkinson to extend the lead. Right footed. Kick towards the post. It's looking all right for now. And the referee says, yes, Good. that will do. And Hallam extend their lead again. It is commanding. Very, very commanding. You can, you can, see, you can see that kind of procession of headers, can't you, from, from Hokea? Yeah. It's, it's a very experienced voice as well, having the middle of the field as well. Um, it's just a, exactly the sort of play you'd want in a fixture like this. In the Super League to Varsity. It means that Hallam are completely dominating Uni of at this stage. Adds an extra couple of points for Hallam in the overall varsity score. They do, they do need to get some backs, don't they, Hallam? They are behind at the moment. This will do them the world of good in the overall score. So the results are icing today. It looks like Uni of have dominated. So this will be a good victory for Hallam. Morale boosting for them, for that university. And at the moment, they're looking set for an 11th consecutive varsity loss. That's dating back to before even we were students. <laughs> Been hot with a chicken scratch there that goes all the way through. No one took charge of that, but Hallam still retained possession. And don't, don't gain any yardage on that phase. Fitzgerald picks it up, and now is the chance to drive forward. A really powerful run, and gets over to the 10-yard line. Now, a couple of yards short of the halfway line. Fitzgerald picks it up again. For sure, drive forward. Really powerful run that was from Calvin. Made he a gets into the 10-yard well. line. Fifth phase now. Maybe a chance to kick, and into the corner, and chase. Big opportunity this for Hallam. Hands need to be right. Really good work very, from very good. to get across, scramble across, and make sure that that possession is held. Calm and composed is what they missed in the first half, isn't it? In the uni of strong defending there from the Keown, isn't it? Because that was a dangerous bouncing ball, and especially with the sun so low now. Mm. Powerful hit, and Hallam are driving uni of back. That's quality from Hallam, and they've won the try. Fantastic turnover has forced the try, and really from the university's position there, all, in possession. It all seems so innocuous, didn't it? Yeah. Hallam are just able to drive them back over the try line and turn the ball over. Might be the softest one they'll get today. But that is not a try, sorry. My it looked like it was a try. 
eventually it just goes over the line and Hallam and University will be able to kick the ball out. So it wasn't a try on that occasion. Sorry, that was my bad. Can't really say that the sun was in our eyes. Really good take there. Really good take, and it allows Hallam to stretch their legs and get to the 22 again. Fitzgerald now driving through. Gets towards the 10 yard zone. Fitzgerald in space. That was no phase there. Fitzgerald is trying to wriggle his way through. About three yards out now. Big opportunity this for Hallam. Goes underneath the crossbar. Can they work it over to the right hand side? Good hand, but it will be the end of phase and University are able to turn it over. Yeah, but it started to slip out of his hands a little bit. Not sure it would have mattered either way, but did well to hold on to it. It's an interesting pass back there from Allen. Decided to go right behind. It will mean it's a knock on and it will mean it's a University put in. And they really need to get out from this from the scrum, don't they? Yeah, 100%. Need to get, it, get at the pitch. All, all been over there in this, this second half so far. It will just get them some confidence as long as they can get into the Hallam half. But yeah. As it is, underneath their own posts. Chance for University to work their way out. There's only one on this left-hand side. The hands have to be good, and they are. But Hallam strong in to keep the ball inside the 22. And a couple of athletes in there. Yeah, loads of support on the left-hand side. It's starting to get a little bit feistier, isn't it, Joe? It's exactly what we want to see from Varsity. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we expected, what we all came to see. The passion, the power. 100%. Can they work it out now? Good, strong challenge in there by Fitzgerald. Holding Uniov up. Still not out of their own half. Five phases in. That's the 10-yard line. Uniov still in possession. There's the kick. It goes long. This is Gotta watch it all the way. Doesn't really really well watched there by Armstrong, who, who mishandled a couple in the first half. Yeah, they, both sides did. Maybe there's an element of the sun getting in his eyes. There's no excuses for that in the second half. Didn't need any excuses there. It's a good take. This is better from Uniov. More aggressive tackling. Starting to force them back a little bit, aren't they? Although the handoff is allowed, and it may be a breakthrough here for Hallam. There's no support. Needs to beat the last man. They've still got phases to spare on this attack. A really powerful run there by Calvin. There's two over on the left-hand side, and it's opened up again. And, Col and Wiltshire goes over. It's yet another Hallam try. Every time they get into the 22, they don't like scoring, Joe. And when you've got players who can make ground like uh, Calvin did there, it, it opens up. You, you, you've got the phase to do what you want with it in the final third. Yeah, it's important now for Uniov not to let their heads drop, but, but really, realistically, the game's gone from them. Yeah, it's, it's about the clean sheet now for Hallam, isn't it? Um, and it's about the University of Sheffield trying to stop them from keeping a clean sheet. It's very clinical at every opportunity, wasn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Didn't need to be too special there at the end. Simple pass. But actually, for Hallam now, it's, 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 it's opened up a question about... What do they do now? Do they, do they just keep on going for it now? For the, for the next half an hour, are they just going to pepper and pepper and pepper? Maybe try and get a record score? With it being varsity, I think you've got to do that. Yeah, can you imagine the bragging rights that would that would bring if they managed to do that? Um, so yeah, that, that, that would be my approach. See what Hallam do. Certainly be interesting. Washington again, holding posts. It's a tight angle, isn't it? Wind on his side. Just wanting to regroup. Just wide, just to the left hand side, but it's not the end of the world for Hallam. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure they'll recover. But realistically, Joe, where, where where do you see the next half hour playing out? I just see Hallam continuing, to be honest. Um I don't see the very aggressive style of rugby. I don't I don't think they'll try and sit back and just uh and be content with what they've got. It's important to spectators as well to, to, to realise that, that Hallam have been so dominant in the league this season and they're showing yeah. all of that class this afternoon. Yeah, it's what we'd expect to see. And it's, it's, again, they got, they got beat last time in their cup final. It's a response they'd want. Um, yeah. For Uniov, how do you try and build up that fight for the last half an hour? Because it's a long way back. You know you're not going to win the game, but you need to stay in it. The fight would be just to, to maintain the thing about not wanting to... Have Hallam keep a clean sheet, really. 
Um, so you, you keep that in the back of your mind. You try not to let them have that joy. And you, you build from there. Oh, it's a terrific run again. <laughs> again, we're talking about the ground they can make up. For sure. All this will cap off what left. has been a fantastic varsity for him. He's made up about 80 yards there, stepping out of his own defence from the kick. And Hallam are back in the 22, and every time they get into the 22, they look like scoring. Again, yeah, for sure, it's his last game as well. Couldn't Breaking ask for a better one. Ten, right underneath the post now. University unable to bring him down. He's down now. End of the phase. Trying to get back to his feet. Hallam have five left. Here's one of them. It's Yeadon. Well, oh, there's a spill. There's a knock on. Yeah. That's frustrating for Hallam because they want that kind of perfect record this afternoon. Yeah, it was it was good build up. It was sloppy in the end, but yeah. How how terrific was that run from Paul Shaw there? Very very good. Again, it was it was commanding. Um, we're talking about the the, the grounds that can make up. Um, yeah, and how the opportunities that opened up. What what more have you got on Paul Shaw then? I don't know, he's the longest serving player in the field. He's the only one who's actually tasted victory with Hallam in varsity. This is scrum for Hallam at the moment. And the university are able to work it out. Good work there. I'm not sure what's going on at the moment. The referee holding it off. Could be an opportunity for us to Recollect and recollect and over the over the course of the sports park day, it's, it's, it's been such a wonderful day. And the, the weather, I said to you this, it's getting windy and rainy. It hasn't let us down so far. Yeah, well, the weather we've had all sorts of seasons in one day, really. Um, yeah, so we've got the uh, the scrum here. So Hallam put in 24 nil onto the left hand side. Maybe a chance for them to go over again. Wiltshire breaking oh. forward. He got the last one. He's got this one as well. It's perfect. It's 28. Yeah. This is a thumping performance from Hallam. It's a new addition to the Hallam Hallam's side. Hallam. You wouldn't wouldn't tell he's as inexperienced as he is. Vinnie Wiltshire, he's brilliant. Well, two tries for him today, and and, and actually. It's, it, it's just been a thumping performance, hasn't it? Yeah, emphatic is ex exactly as they'd want it to be. <laughs> and you were saying earlier that in varsity, Hallam are going to to try and go on to this conference. Is it, what do you think the limit's going to be? Because university are in their huddle now. They are going to be saying, we cannot let this get to a ridiculous score. Yeah, well... I don't know if we know what the record score would be, but that's got to be the limit now for the University of Sheffield. Try and keep it below that. And it will cap off what has been a fantastic season for Hallam. It's just a shame they couldn't quite get the treble over the line for defeat, defeating the cup final last month. But they, they, listen, they'll be delighted with how the season's gone. An unfortunate mistake late on against Lancaster. That doesn't define a season. Another terrific kick from Wilkinson. That's over. 30 nil to the Clarets and it really university are getting a real ticking down from the head coach at the moment they've not looked like getting forward at all in the second half have they the university but wait and see what happens if you were trying to to stir up some passion some fight what, what would you be saying if you if, if you were the university captain right now don't score none that that would be it there's nothing else really to say is there don't let Hallam have the, 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 the bragging rights of keeping a clean sheet in varsity. That's on the cards. If Hallam can survive the next 25 minutes. 30 nil. It's an absolute drumming so far. Yeah. It's important that university don't lose their heads. Make sure that they can rally themselves. It can be difficult when you're playing such superior opposition, but them, a bit of pride, last game of the season, a bit of passion. Absolutely, Give you a chance a bit more to. Off the uni of, a bit more passion. Write your name. They've won the ball from the restart. Massive opportunity now for them to break into the 22. Powerful run. Gets them further up the pitch, doesn't it? It's exactly what they need. Mm. 15 yards out, and this is phase two now. Over to the left hand side, and it looks like. Alan went a bit early. 
So a penalty to Uniov. Chance for them to start again. There's the tap. There's the run. Can he break through the Hallam line? That's the 10 yard line. Trying to get out. Four on the right hand side, but University tried to stay central and break through. Three yards out now, but pushed back to the five yard line. Really, it's frustrating for Uniov. They haven't made any yardage up on this particular occasion. There's three on the left hand side. They can find it. Maybe a chance to run into the corner. Take that. Pass is quite high. It will be another penalty for Uniov. Backing away, it means they get to start the phase yeah, again. And this could phases. be the big opportunity for them. It can make it count. It's about the composure. They've not shown too much of it today. The yellow card of Simbin's oh. gone out there. Now Hallam down to 12. The next 10 minutes. This is the opportunity for University. Now now yeah. with a man advantage. Yeah. And the ball on the five yard line. Again about keeping your composure, not panicking. Just oh, trying to clarify who it is who has been Simbin's. There. They work it over, and there's four on the right-hand side, but they stay central. A powerful run. Maybe a chance for Unioff to score, and that's exactly what they've done. Borowski has whistled over the line, and it's given Unioff some hope in this game, but it's given them a score, and that's the most important thing. And he's, he's been the standout player, to be fair, Jack Borowski. Um, so it's a well-deserved try for him. I mean, they're, they're, they're on the score sheet. It didn't look like that was going to be the case two or three minutes ago. But it gives them an opportunity. It just gives them hope. I mean, there's still 25 minutes to go. Yeah. We do mention they about them they missing. They get another try whilst, whilst Hallam are down to 12. It could make for interesting reading. And as it is... Yeah, we did mention about them missing their usual goal kick. It's never going to be an issue there, was it? Yeah. So 36 is the score here at Sports Park. Powerful try by Jack Borowski opportunity now for uni of just to build on it and, uh, and take that as a bit of hope yeah they've still got the man advantage for a few minutes um i think it was joe Britton who was sinbin's for hallam um but yeah they've still got the man advantage if they can take advantage of that see how far they can go for hallam it'd be important for them to tighten up because that would be frustrating for them as yeah you've been saying the whole game they want to be keeping that clean sheet yeah. they can't do that now so now it's a case of them trying to regroup yeah um, just keeping it tight and just continuing as as they were going up until that point. Alan get back underway into the sun. But With the sun really in the eyes, take. that's a really good take, isn't it? Can Uni get out of their own 22? Not in the first phase. Support to the left-hand side. With the man advantage. Out of the 22 now, but really well held up there by Coles. From Hallam. Bit of frustration as Uni come up to the 10 yard line. But Hallam are able to drag Borowski back to, back to the floor. Phase three now. That's the halfway line the University are trying to get over. Sports on the right hand side. There's the kick towards the corner. Can they put the pressure on Hallam? Interesting Just bouncing bounce. about all the place and getting a lot of territory from that, haven't well they? pick it up but he's able to drive forward and you know that he can power his way out of a defense that's exactly what he's done with two handoffs over to the right hand side made up about 20 yards and has gone to the other flank that allows Hallam to just re-spread out their attack and get to the 10 yard line and that's kind of been the difference in Uniov and Hallam hasn't it, it yeah. it's taken Uniov about four or five phases to get to the halfway line yeah. Hallam are in there in two again it's very direct some really strong players in there. Talk about Zin Hock as well. Really, really strong. A knock on on that occasion. There will be another scrum in the centre of the park. On the 10 yard line. The university put in. A rare mistake from Hallam. Not been too many of them today. I just wonder what it would do to the un University of Sheffield if they were to get another one back. Surely too far. Stranger things have happened. They have indeed. This is the man that's really shone for them. Borowski, who got that try. I picked him out in the first half as one of Uniov's 
more potent players, isn't he? Definitely one of the more potent players. Yeah, They've well. Three over on the right hand side now. That pass looks slightly forward. And that's the frustration from the Callum defence. There's a big old fight here. Good battle. There's still a little bit of afters on the go. deck and a few scenes that are going on, but that's the passion of Varsity getting in each other's faces. Need to walk away from this now. Sagar Sabu. Last thing that Hallam needs is another yellow card. Yeah, down to, down to, to 11. Yeah, it was Yadin and Tab Sabu, I think. Referee standing nonchalantly with his hands on his hips. <laughs> Seen it all before, lads. Oh, old schoolmaster. <laughs> but a good opportunity, this for university, isn't it? It's yeah, yeah. Referee just taking charge one. of the situation. And they'll, they'll be happy just, just with the way they've responded as well. Last two, five or ten minutes. They've not given up. They've not thrown the towel in. And they've, they've sort of got back into the game where they can. And they, they do okay, deserve credit for that. And then they, they make the mistake. And that, that, that's kind of summed them up. Today. Yeah. Yeah. So, really good opportunity. And a few more frustrated faces on that uni. It has been sloppy at times, but they've been hot. Where do you see the game going from here? Because Hallam haven't quite made any inroads in the last 10 minutes or so. They're obviously, they're out to 12, but, yeah. but, but, but they haven't actually been able to get out of their own half. Yeah, I think well, it's, just, it's just a good spell for University of Sheffield. Um, we'll see what happens. Have to end at some point. Midway through the second half. Hallam in control of the scoreline, but not in control of the ball. University with a chance to touch and go and work over to the right flank. Just eyes on the touch line. University are able to work it back in field. Now, can, can they break over that five-yard line? Held up again. Phase three. Goes to the left. Many men over on the other side. They'll need fast hands on, if on they the work it side, over. One and there's the overload, but he decides to cut back in field. That might have been the wrong, op wrong option on that occasion. But that is the try line that University are dangerously close to. Back to the five-yard line. Held up again by Hallam. Good defence there. By the Hallam back line, front line. Back into midfield with Borowski. He tries to wriggle away, but he's still only as far as the five yard line. About two yards short now. Phase five. There's the kick, straight into the hands of the Hallam defence. Really well held. Hallam able to get possession and make sure that University retreat. It was offside there, but and the Hallam are able to take the penalty. And weather the storm. Yeah. Just look, reset, reset and recover. They've been under the cosh last five or ten minutes. They'll need this. University, get, get to the five yard line. You, every time you need to get there, you need to make that attack count. That composure, isn't it? We've said all afternoon. It's just been lacking at times when they've needed it. So, Hallam back up midway through the second half. Midway through their own half, geographically. Three to the left-hand side to aim for. It's a chance for them to run forward. The ball stays up, so maybe a chance to save a phase. And working over to the left-hand side is another overload here for Hallam. Possible to cut inside. That's Bates. Oh, That's quality. Yeah. Uh, utter quality. Hallam have yet another try. I tell you what they need. He's done it a few times today. Tom Bates, hasn't he? Little burst of pace. Didn't he do well? Powerful. It was, it was the change of direction, wasn't it? He had yeah. Wiltshire to his left hand side, who could have got his hat trick, but Dropped Bates decided shoulder. to go alone and, and just go under the post and, and, and add an extra two points as well. Yeah, we can talk about how, how agile he is, dropping his shoulder there. It was brilliant. And that Ham needed that really, last five or ten minutes, as we've been saying. They've been under the cosh. They're, they'll hope this is a return to normality now. Yeah, it can't be long with the Simbin left as well. And when they're back to full strength, you, you almost fear for university, don't you? Yeah. Um, Look, they've, they've not got long to weather it out now, but yeah. Working well. Chance for Hallam to extend their lead even further. Should be fairly simple, this you would think. Keith Sifu, he's on the pitch and he's giving instructions to his players. To, he must be happy with the scoreline, doesn't he? Yeah, it's, it's perfectionist. It's, it's exactly what you want from a coach. Never quite happy. But listen, uh, deep down, he'll be absolutely delighted with the way it's gone for his side. Another opportunity to extend this lead. And after all the hard work from university to 
get themselves that try. They need to start working on the offensive again. And, and really, def offensively has been poor going forward, but defensively it'd be, it'd be tough for them. Yeah, they, they, lack of, the lack of composure has cost them at times today. Um, second half, they've been sort of defending into the sun, but I'd argue they've been a bit more solid in the second half because you, you wouldn't expect that, but that's, that's the way of the world. You almost hark back to that opening 10 minutes of the first half, don't you? The, yeah. There was a couple of opportunities where University got into the 22, played it on the outside and, and just missed their just missed their handling. And, and, and really, yeah. that's kind of cost them because every time that Hallam come over the halfway line, they don't like scoring. Yeah, exactly that. But this is how it happens, isn't it? Quarter of an hour of Sport Park to go. Sport Park day to go. Thank you for joining us on Forge TV. We've had the men's football, the women's football, men's rugby union. Now the men's rugby league, all on live stream. Glad to see a Forge TV. It's been a wonderful day. And as the sun sets in Tinsley, overall, it's been a fantastic day for university. It has. Um, it's always a good day for, for university sport, though. Um, we've had the lacrosse. We've had the indoor cricket. We've had all the football events. It's just a really enjoyable day for everyone. Talking earlier about how there's some twists and turns, but oh, oh, just a knock on on this occasion. But better again from Hallam. They had the overload again. Three men on the outside, but they just weren't not able to make it pay. Yeah. Um, they're trying it. Trying to work it. Yeah, is it? Sports Park Day is always, always the turn in varsity with a big twist and turns to, to really figure out who the overall winner is going to be. So actually... It, it doesn't, dent, it doesn't dent the varsity score, does it? Yeah, the University of Sheffield did have a, a, a commanding lead. Obviously, the football's going on as we speak, the men's football. So we'll have to wait and see what the result of that is. But it, it's not the end of the world for the University of Sheffield. This, they've still got a commanding lead, but certainly the rugby union, the, the rugby league side, they'll be disappointed. No extra points, no bonus points for the number of tries that Hallam have run in, but certainly. And there's still so much to go at varsity as well, another, another week or so. Stuff like the, the water polo and the triathlon and all those sorts of events. I'm personally looking forward to the dressage. Yes. I do love a bit of dancing horses. It's just a shame there's no Quidditch. <laughs> did you get your did you get your broomstick? No comment. No. Being from Durham, I think you'd have to, wouldn't you? Yeah. Sent over into the Hallam half then, who are in complete control. Maybe a chance for for Armstrong to drive forward. He's looked much more assured in this second half at claiming the ball. And he gets up to the halfway line and he allows Hallam to play the second phase. Driving over to the left-hand side. There's still two over on the left-hand side. That's the phase. Moving up into the university half. And there's the overload here, haven't there? Another good opportunity to break inside, but Yeadon decided to cut back in field. Just as there was three claret shirts on his blind side, but maybe a chance now for Hallam to work into the 22 again. That's Fleet being able to hold it up. Fitzgerald picks up the ball. Maybe works it now into Allen to his right-hand side, but there's a bit of a knock-on. Knock on. That'll be the end of play in that in that phase. But, but, but better again from Hallam. Good possession. Yeah, they're working it. It's patient. They don't need to hurry it. Not one bit. It's been a tough old season, and out comes the uh, out comes the famous old cramp, <laughs> cramp uh, yeah. stretch. It's been going on since uh, I think it was October. These two sides did meet at the start of October in a, a freshers game. It's a long old match. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it will feel a lot longer for the University of Sheffield. Put it that way. <laughs> Going into the final stages of what's been a fantastic day here on Forge TV. We're listening to Joe Burton and myself, Jed Pemberthy. As Hallam are dominating the Rugby League men's firsts. In the final event of the day. Hallam in possession then. First phase. Maybe a chance for Forshaw to break through. It's his final he's varsity. He's again trying there, to make he? sure that he's on the score sheet for it. Works over to the right hand side. Broken through now is Yeadon. That's the try line, but the ball is held up. Good defence, really, by Unioth to stop the ball going down over the line, but Hallam will retain possession. Did what they needed to do. 
they've got to, they've got to stay switched on here though. The uni alt. There's the ball. There's still one over on the left hand side, but the good work from the university to come up and close the gap. That's the five yard line. Maybe a chance for Callum to break inside. Yeadon looking for the try line now. About two yards out. Good work from Hallam. Usually when they get into this position, they find a way over the line. And there's the handoff over to the right-hand side. They've still got three over. Can they work it over? But it's just held up again. Good work from Hallam to keep the phase alive. There's the kick, and it bounces off the head of the university defender. That means it's not going to be a knock-on. They were asking for a knock-on on the far side, but it came off the boot, didn't it? Maybe a chance for university to break out the 22. But he's just tripped over his own feet there. A little bit frustrating, but... It does mean that university stay in possession. I think it almost sums up the day, that really, doesn't it, for University of Sheffield. It's, just, it's not gone for them. Maybe a word on the pitch. It has had to endure an extra game just before this with, without the roller going out. And there's a knock-on. Maybe a chance for Hallam to make university pay again. Just going back to the pitch, it's seen all the conditions today, hasn't it? It really has. We've had all four seasons. Four short using his long legs to try and break the university line. Stays on his feet, keeps the phase alive. Good work into the five yards now. There's Fitzgerald, and now Allen. Bates driving forward. He's got a couple ready today. Still five yards out, he's been tracked on the floor. And the referee's given a halt to that, and still the university player has a hold of Bates' leg. <laughs> yeah, yellow card, he's, he's off he's in the bin. It's a bit silly, really, isn't yeah, it? That's it doesn't the frustration need to get involved going. with that. That's the frustration Maybe going. O'Keefe. No O'Keefe's no day. May just be over. Tap and go. Hallam, right underneath the post. May be able to make the extra man advantage. They're back to full strength now. Here's Fitzgerald. Now Allen. He's got support to his right. And there's space on the right-hand side. Maybe an opportunity. Just cuts back in field. Just tries to find the space. That's the try line. Callum's still not over it just yet. Breaking through. That's a lovely run. He's gone down. And it looks like Callum have got yet another one. Yeah. Powerful run. Oh. Making that extra man advantage. Get over the try line. Yeah. Jobs are good. There were so many players over on that far side. It could have been any of your five or six in maroon. If you finish that off. But the important thing is that it was finished off. So clinical, Callum, this afternoon. Yeah. Much more that can be said for that union side, actually, because although it was quite a tight game towards the end, where yeah. university pulled away, it was just kind of <laughs> schoolboy errors. Yeah. And the same, yeah. Um, the composure, the nerves, a bit of the, some of the conditions, possibly, although, you know, Got to factor in that for both sides. Here's an interesting one. Forshaw's going to kick this one. He's gone for it. He's got to take it. That's a lovely, just nailed it. Lovely kick, but it's just wide. And Forshaw is trying to work his way onto that score sheet, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Certainly trying Gone to make to sure that his last varsity has his name on it. Yeah. That's as many highs and lows for Holland. That probably won't be up there with the highs. <laughs> It's a shame we don't have Opta to see what his kicking stats actually are. Yeah. They'll be worth a look, I'll tell you. I know for one, it's going to be naught for one today. <laughs> and it means that Hallam do extend their lead, not from the kick, but from the try. As we approach the last 10 minutes of this one, University trying their damnedest to get their way back into the game. Forshaw picks up the ball from the restart. He does well to get back to his feet start again. University down to 12 at the moment. And Hallam have been dominating at full strength. So a lot of grit needs to be shown by University in these final stages. Yeah, look, the way they've, they've shown plenty of grit today, but they just haven't been able to, to compose themselves when they need to. So if they can show that in the final stages. The powerful figure of Hock getting up to the halfway line now for Hallam. They were trying to Break down university again. His final game, of course, as well, Vin Hock. 
There's the kick up towards the try line, and Bates is after it. And Bates is going to get there. Maybe an opportunity for Hallam to get yet another one. Really good work at the end of that phase, but then Bates goes down. And there's a little bit of frustration there. And the referee is just calling over, and it's interesting to see what he says here. As Hallam are in possession. And it looks like the referee has called that Hold that. It. Why not? Sheffield Hallam are the crowned varsity champions again. A terrific victory today. They really have taken everything on today. And they, they, they've completely dominated from the very first whistle. They were the better side from start to finish. Um, they were the more composed. The quality, the experience that they've all got, um, league champions, cup finalists, that, that all showed. Um, yeah, disappointing day for the Uni of Sheffield. They'll look to bounce back next year. But five years without defeat in varsity, it's been a good run for them. Had to come to an end at some point, though. It's such a young side, such a young Hallam side today. But it is a good opportunity for them to say goodbye to some of, some of the legends that have been part of their team for the yeah. last five years. Uh, so Zin in midfield, um, Tom Barlow, Ben Forshaw was excellent, outstanding today. Um, but also the the, the young players, um, can I talk about your Tom Bates, his try in the first half, the, the speed and the just the tenacity that he showed to get to the try line was out, outstanding. And that's, yeah, that's the difference. Going forward then, obviously, Hallam unbeaten champions this year and, and a, a really touch of class to say goodbye to the university players. But unbeaten champions did lose the final, but they've won varsity. Yeah, um, bragging rights for everything. Um, nice little bit of respect at the end, of course. Um, we, we always like to see that, but yeah, the bragging rights, that's, that's a massive thing for Hallam. So it's a big opportunity now for University just to dust themselves down and get themselves ready for next season. Yeah, it was, it was a tough day today. They'll, they'll know that and they'll, they'll recover from that. But I'm sure they'll be back next season better than ever. And yeah, we hope to see them again next year. It's been a very, very sunny day here at Sports Park and they're full time here at the Hallam for the Rugby League. Hallam are resounding winners, Seb. A big thank you to our culture team there of Jed Penberthy and Joe Burton. Wow, Eddie, I'm not quite sure any of us expected that. Perhaps you, maybe. What are your uh, overall thoughts after the game? Do you know what? I'm absolutely buzzing with that result, um, as you can probably tell by the smile on my face. Um, obviously, commiserations to Uni of Sheffield. I mean, they put up a very good fight. Um, they, had, they had opportunities to capitalise on, on other things, i.e. when Joe Burton got sent to the same bin. They had, obviously, they, they score off the back of that, which is obviously good, but you would have thought they'd have punished them more and more as the game went on but um, like I say commiserations to the Union of Sheffield and the best team won in my eyes. Yeah so it did finish um, a victory to, to Hallam right um, what, what did you make the Hallam's performance altogether? Yeah I thought Hallam I mean I, I didn't think they could top that first half and they, and they went and did it um, yeah brilliant you know really utilising that left hand side Vinnie Wilts in my opinion probably player of that second half brilliant use of that down that left hand side two tries for him and yeah I mean that's, that's just everything that the Hallam team would have wanted yeah, what was it in particular that stood out for for, for you? I, don't, I just think it's 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 more of the fact that Uni of just couldn't they couldn't capitalise. You know, as as Eddie said, you know when Britain got sent to the got sent to the sim bin, you know you had you had ten minutes you got to get on top of that game. You've you've got to try and make a comeback, and yeah, they they didn't make the most of that opportunity, and that's probably what's what's cost them a potential comeback. Do you agree with that, Eddie? Yeah, definitely. I I, I totally agree with what Ray has to say. I mean that the the second half, the, the both teams came out flying and. You, when you see when you see um, Hallam going down, down that right hand right hand corner, like we say in the in the first half, they've switched it over completely to the other side, and uh, you see that, and you see the head start going down a bit, and then obviously as a as a team, you try and recoup and and try and build that momentum, try and get another, try and get a, try and get a try back, but obviously unlucky for Union, they just didn't capitalise on, on that today. We spoke a little bit uh, pre-match about a last year result, and that Hallam uh, were up at half time and then eventually lost the lead. Yeah. What does that mean for them this year, the fact that they, they were up at half-time this time and they were able to maintain that, that lead and ultimately win the game? Yeah, it's, it's massive for them, you know. It's, fight, it's, getting, over, it's getting over that stumbling block, the mentality that we talked about previously. It's, it's get, getting, getting into that half-time, you know. Keith had, Keith and Masad said something, you know. You, you've been down, you've been up two times, you've been into the, we've been into the, the changing rooms. You know, you've got, to, you've got to come out, you've got to start. And they started really well. They started, got out the blocks really, really quickly. Got that early try and that, that pretty much killed the game for me, I think. And Eddie, Eddie what, do you, what do you reckon? Yeah, I've got, to, I've got to completely agree with you. I mean, the lads, they just dug deep. They found, they 
obviously they've gone into the shed at half time and they've they've come out flying, uh, like we said, like yeah. I literally just said, two tries in really quick succession going into that second half, and you'd have thought if if Uni had wanted to try and pull that game back, you'd have thought they would have gone mm. for it. And for me, it just the second half, it looked a completely different side. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, we are actually able to cross over to a man of many talents, Mr. Jed Penberthy, fresh from his his commentary position. He's pitch side now. <laughs> yes, it's time to uh to uh, kind of wet my fantastic second half. Lucas enjoys me now, Tom. What a fantastic afternoon for you guys. Yeah, you know it wasn't too bad. You know we're disappointed to concede a try like we did, but um, you know just all around pretty good performance from the boys. Yeah, how do you feel going into the half time such a commander. Yeah, no, it was good. You know, we weren't exactly where we want, wanted to be. You know, we weren't completing like we wanted. Um, but, you know, we spoke at half-time about just sticking what we was doing, keeping it down the middle where all big lads are. Um, yeah, and it worked for the second half. After such an unbeaten season, uh, that kind of loss must have been in minds, but, but to, to come to Varsity and, and dominate like that, it must have been great for you. Yeah, that's it. We spoke about, after that cup final, and we spoke about it in the changing rooms before the game, um, just not wanting to feel that again. We all know what that felt like. Um, one of the greatest team in the world, so to come here and do this, yeah, it's pretty special. A touch of class at the end to, to say goodbye to the university uh, university players. It, it might be a rivalry, but it's a friendly one at that. That's it. It's, it's a game built on respect, isn't it? Um, they say it's a gentleman's game, even though it doesn't look like it on the pitch. But yeah, so we all shake hands at the end. I have no doubt we'll see them out tonight, have a beer together. So, yeah. Tom, thank you ever so much. Congratulations. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Brilliant, thank you for that, Jed. Great insight there from the Hallam camp. Uh, Eddie, Ryan, who were your players of the game? I'll come to you first, Ryan. Uh, uh, there's, <laughs> so, there's so many to choose from. You know, Tom Bates had a brilliant game. Um, Vinny Welch, obviously, in that second half. But I'm going to go with Tom Wilkinson. I think his sort of getting into that, getting into uh, those heavy hitting challenges, especially in that second half, were really good. His conversions, fantastic again. And yeah, he really, he really swung, he's really swung that in Hallam's favour. And, and yourself, Eddie? Yeah, for me, I've got to say Finn Fitzgerald. I mean, like like I was saying to you on the balcony yeah. outside, he was catching the players out from the from the quick play of the ball. He was drawing the players in, and, he, and a lot of the tries did come from him. You could see him and Tom Wilkinson work. Mm. Absolutely, and it is actually a first varsity victory for Hallam in the Rugby League since 2019. How big will that be for the camp, guys? Yeah, they're going to love it. I mean, you know, we'll probably be able to hear the changing room from here, to be quite honest. But, yeah, I mean, you know, after five years, obviously we had COVID, but at the same time, you know, finally getting over that voodoo of five years, a five-year wait is something to be proud of, I think. Yeah, and Eddie, yourself, having been in, in involved in the squad in recent years, what will the feelings be in that dressing room right now? I'll tell you, I think we'll be giving the best first match. <laughs> We ob obviously Halle won the game overall, but we've got to talk about a moment in play where University of Sheffield just didn't quite capitalise, and that was when the Sinbin was involved. Yeah. They were 34 down, and they just didn't quite take the full advantage, did they? No, it, it just it was, it was it was a strange one because you know you're a man down, you thought you'd you know you'd go for it, you know you've got probably 20, 20 left on the clock, and they just they just couldn't they just couldn't quite get over get over that sort of stumbling block of well. You know, you've got you've got that man down in Britain who had, a, who had quite a good game, and you, you s you're sitting there and you're wondering, well, when's it, when's it going to come? When's this breakthrough going to come? And it just, it never did, and that, that played right into Hallam's hands, got Britain back on the pitch, and then sort sort of completely killed the game if it wasn't already done already. Why do you think that breakthrough never came, Eddie? I don't know. I think I think there was kind of like on the field at that point, or, or at that point in the game, you you looked at the the, the, the union approach, and we didn't really have many answers after that point. I thought um, when Joe went off. It looked like Victor wasn't a player missing. You really had that, really had that extra after that. Stood down in the forwards. You know, thought, okay, let's just try and dive down the middle. And they just tried to, going out, tried to keep going out wide, and it just didn't seem to work for them today. But um, like I say, um, really, all, they, they could have had that chance to capitalise on it. And Definitely, yeah. For me, I just, I, it just wasn't, they weren't, they weren't the races today. But surely that's massive credit to, to Hallam for that. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. They, um, one man up, and that's, that's, that's one man down, and it's now about 
Uh, and you're, and you're looking at the same sort of groups of other cell guys, so it's, it's slightly different. But I've got the same spot, three players outside, so it's, it's the same tight in the middle. They force them to start wide, and if that's the strength, and that's the carry they need to then it may be better than the in that spot. Um, I, I know you, you obviously predict, predicted a, a, a Haaland victory pre match. Right, did you quite expect the victory to be so dominant? Uh, that, that it ended up being? Yeah, no, I, I thought it'd be a lot tighter than it was. Obviously, in the three games that they've played this season, the Cup and the League, it's it's not been as, this is the most convincing it's been for Hallam. And it, it came as a little bit of a shock, to be quite honest. I didn't I didn't think Hallam would be able to score 40, but they have credit to them. They were absolutely brilliant. And yeah, the uni off after, they've got to be disappointed with themselves. You know, there, there was too many times where they had the chances to really capitalise on some of the Hallam errors, and they didn't, but... You know, there were very few and far between, especially in that second half. And Ed, in the University of Sheffield camp, how will they be feeling right now? Oh, they'll be they'll be absolutely buzzing. I mean, oh, I'm so happy for them. Like the, the the atmosphere in that change room right now will be electric, and it's a feeling that obviously I've not ever had the pleasure to embrace. But I, I, I'm so happy for them. It'll be bouncing wall to wall. And what what about the Uni of? How how will they be feeling? They'll they'll be sitting there having having to reflect on a performance that. Maybe they didn't see in their eyes was it the best performance, but um, they'll want to rec recuperate and go again next year to try and get one over on the uh, on, on the Maroons. It absolutely will be. So yeah, it's been an, a first victory since 2019. And um, what does what does this mean for, for, for the squad? Do you think, right? Yeah, no, uh, it, they've, they've got to be buzzing with that. Like Eddie said, you know, there's going to be electric down there. You know, he's he's been with the lads. He knows what they've he knows what they've been through these past few years. You know, losing this game and to be finally on that winning side is going to be something that they're gonna they're gonna cherish here. Absolutely, yeah. And, and Eddie, yourself, have, having been pretty close to, to the camp, they'll, they'll be buzzing. Can they go again next year? Oh, definitely, 100%. <laughs> I mean, they've got, they've got a very strong foundation. They've built a very strong foundation for next year. We had, that, we had the, pretty much the base of the squad last year with a couple of departures. They've filled, they've filled the team with even more players to, to fill in all the positions, and I can't see why they can't go and make it a double again next year. Do you, do you back that as well, Guy? Yeah, I mean, after, after, after seeing that today, I don't, I don't see why not. But at the same time, I think Uniov are going to be disappointed with that performance. You know, that doesn't really reflect them as a team. You know, only, only being able to get that six against Hallam is probably the, probably the, probably the low point of their season, I'd say, by and far. It, yeah, yeah, and, and another talking point, during, during the game as well, there was a little bit of a scuffle together mm -hmm. between the, the, the two sides, and uh, you weren't too happy with, with the coach involvement in that. Yeah, I mean, well, you, you, see, you see a bit of scuffle, it comes, it comes with rugby league, you, you, everyone knows that, but to see when their coach starts getting involved with the scuffle itself, it's, you, take, you have to take a back seat and look at it and think, uh, why is this happening? As a, as a third party spectator, I was, I was a bit like taken back by it, you don't see, you don't, like in, even in professional games, you don't see your coaches getting involved. So, um, yeah, uh, it's one of them things. Heat at the moment, I presume. But Definitely. But yeah. I'm, I'm hoping they can all get, get over it and have a good pint together. So. Well, <laughs> absolutely. So, yeah, a victory, a first varsity victory for Hallam in the Rugby League. Thank you for joining myself, Rai and Eddie, and we'll see you on Monday for Corfball. <laughs> Booyah! Well, I don't know. 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 I don